Hello everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So we're continuing to learn quality assurance from scratch. We're getting closer to actual test plans, test cases, bug filing, uh, different QA tools and really hands-on stuff. Uh, but a couple more still, a couple more videos uh, with software development uh, methodologies. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about Kanban and Lean. Uh, so essentially, uh, Kanban is a mix of Lean and Agile methodology, and the method of development was visualization of workflow, where teams prioritize tasks and complete them by moving through stages, and from one side of the whiteboard to another. You probably seen those like whiteboards with stickies, and there's a lot of like uh, images and screenshots and pictures online. Um, and let's talk a little bit about Lean. So Lean is Essentially, principles of manufacturing, it came from manufacturing actually in Japan. So the lean then became like worldwide and moved from manufacturing into software development. Okay, so the key principles of lean uh, process is eliminating waste. So you want to eliminate anything that is not adding value to the customer or minimize it. That means... Uh, bugs, partial and incomplete work, micromanagement, like too many meetings that are not important. You know, focus on delivering a value to the customer. Then uh, another principle of Lean is build quality in. That means you want to test early. You want to eliminate as many bugs as possible in early stages. So essentially, you have to have good quality product out of the door and not try to fix it later and find critical issues. No, build quality in. Third principle is create knowledge. So you want to build often and practice small releases. And with that, you want to have code review. You want to have knowledge sharing. You want to have documented processes. So, you know, team is learning as they go. They're building knowledge and they create knowledge. Uh, delay commitment. That's another principle of Lean. It's, it's kind of interesting. So you don't want to commit to design or architecture until all assumptions are ruled out and multiple solutions evaluated. So if you're committing to something, that means you know you want to be sure that it's going to be this way. Okay. Uh, the fifth principle of Lean is deliver fast. Uh, that means you want to develop fast. You want to receive feedback from the customers. You want to improve based on it. Uh, and essentially, you know, it's also it also may be called like fail fast and learn from results. Uh, number six in Lean Principles is respect people. So you want self-organized teams. Uh, you want to develop leaders within those teams. And you want to make sure that teams are properly staffed with needed expertise. And the, you as manager or the owner, uh, you set reasonable goals to those teams. So this is all part of respecting people. Uh, and principle number seven is optimize the whole. So it means each stage of software development life cycle should be analyzed with each iteration and optimized and improved through, through learning and experience. So there's a feedback, something didn't work well, uh, make sure, you know, uh, it, it's going to get optimized. Okay. Um, for Kanban, so essentially, again, this is the whiteboard with sticky notes, and I'm pretty sure you, you've seen that a lot. There's a lot of advertisement for Kanban specialized uh, boards, like I think Trello, uh, one of the very popular ones. So the key ideas of Kanban, right? You want to manage, uh, you want to manage flow. So you want to identify bottlenecks, and you want to estimate effort. So the flow should be seamless, right? Uh, you want to limit work in progress. You want to set whip limits. You don't want to have multiple tickets sitting in one column and, you know, nothing's being done about. Uh, you, want, you want to also to have visible and simple processes so everyone knows what's going on, what are inside those tickets, uh, what is the next stage. The team is actually aware how the whole flow works. Um, you want to have continuous feedback. So if something's not working well, you want to ha get feedback from the team. Uh, you need to have those discussions regularly. And if something is broken and there's ideas how to improve it, you have to continuously improve the process. So you start where you're at uh, with Kanban. You start creating those stories, tickets, and then uh, you initialize the process and you keep on improving it. So visually, it's very interesting, but Kanban board uh, looks something like that um, 
and this is one of this is from the previous video where we actually had um, a project in Scrum, right? But in Scrum, if you go into actual board, it's essentially going to be the same as a Kanban board. So you'll have a set of stories and tickets and tasks in a backlog that's going to be selected here for the work. They should be prioritized so the top priority goes first. And you move through those columns. You essentially move this ticket through work to in progress. Uh, and let's say there's some whip limits in each column. So you can't have two or more or more tickets here. Let's say three in progress. So that means developers don't work on three uh, different stories or features uh, more than three at the same time, right? Once you have more than three, this whole column gonna light red. So you know you'll immediately see there's an issue there. Uh, then it moves to QA. Uh, again, QA also will have like a, a whip limit in their column. So maybe not more than three as well. So you, you can test three stories at the same time, not more than that, right? If there's more then you know, it's going to light up red and there will be a conversation why. Okay, then it moves into done. And essentially it is complete. Uh, there's no sprints in Kanban. Mostly there's no sprints. There could be some release dates. There could be some, you know, epics that have some expectation delivery date, but there's it's it's not really working in a sprint manner. It's working by moving those uh, stories from left side of the board to the right side based on the priority, right? And uh, it, it is continuous work, continuous delivery. If something small gets in, it's done. You want to ideally release when it's done. A uh, couple of things that are not visible here, but you also can have swim lanes. A swim lane essentially is like a separator in your board that stretches across all of the columns. And um, what can be two different swim lanes, for example? Well, you can have a swim lane for software development uh, in the process, and then let's say maybe hardware development in the process. Or you can have a swim lane for uh, internal use or external use or top customers you know most revenue making customers or uh, maybe uh, some other type of customers so swim lace is essentially dividing your board with a specific uh, set of end users that going to be receiving the product and how it's going to be delivered like what what are the differences between hardware development swim lane or in the software development swim lane, right? Completely different products. Uh, they maybe go one uh, together, one that you build, but the swim lanes for process is going to be different, okay? And essentially, yeah, that's it on Kanban and Lean. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. And if you, why I like Lean, uh, because when... I was working in different type of uh, agiles, uh, frameworks, methodologies, right? Um, and one of the problems when you have sprints, uh, you if you fail to deliver, the, your stories kind of overlap and then go out into the next sprints. And the workload increases, uh, the date of the release doesn't actually moves, and by the end, closer to the release, you'll have like this craziness happening that, you know, there's so many work that overflown from previous sprints and it, it, it was pretty hectic, right? Uh, with Kanban, everything seems uh, very seamless. It's like a flow. It keeps on going in a pretty predictable pace. Um, and because tasks are moving by priority, it's very visible what's been worked on, what is the top priority, how it is moving through the board. And the whole idea, it, it, it's just like continuous Hey, there's a story here, moves here, moves here, to done. And then again, moves here, moves here, moves here, moves here, to done. Uh, those stories, again, normally they're epic based, so they're based on some larger feature. And once one epic is completed, another epic is started. And then again, uh, stories with this epic, they keep on moving like that. Uh, for QA, of course, for QA, the task of QA is testing, very fine. Uh, making sure that the requirements make sense, you know how to test it. If you find issues, you know, open in bugs uh, and making sure that you're delivering quality software. Uh, and also you make sure that the quality is built in. So you give your QA uh, opinions on the tasks, how they're going to be uh, tested, how they're going to be verified. So there's a visibility and developers know what they need to look out for when they build. All right. So this is pretty much uh, it on Lean and Kanban uh, based on my experience.
So hopefully you enjoyed it. We're going to have one more video on uh, development methodologies, and then we're going to get uh, more in-depth into actual QA stuff. Okay, this was Alex USA Days. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, and there's a, a link to the, play, the whole playlist on how to learn QA from scratch in the description to this video. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.